I've always said that jazz is, is, the great, is the greatest American film noir. It just happens to have the most unbelievable soundtrack. Um, because it really is, I mean, what people gravitate toward in jazz, um, I mean, I'm sure the classical era has lots of interesting stories, we just don't know about them, um, but jazz really is the American experience, you know, the, the rooming house, you know, lipstick on the teeth, torn stockings, guys in fedoras, you know, bank robbery, I mean, all the things of film noir, that's also part of jazz, I mean, you know, you wonder which came first sometimes, jazz or the film noir, because they're so intricately um, intertwined. Um, but the music, you know, it's the story of the artist. It's the story of the dark, brooding artist who, who's looking for, you know, a dark place in his soul to find the creative source, to create music that's not only, not only going to be different than what came before, but also will actually sell and make money. So the, the jazz artist has this enormous dilemma, this, this terrible dilemma between creating music that is artistically valuable, meaning his or her peers find that that music is above and beyond what they've created, but at the same time, audiences are willing to pay to buy records or download or, or, or spend money at concerts. So it's this it's being torn between commercial necessity and artistic integrity, and that clash is where the film noir exists. It's, it's how do I create without selling out, which is, I think, the biggest struggle a jazz artist always has.